The chapters in this module discuss mobile computing and the cloud. Both of these are possible because of the rapid pace of advancement in technology. You may remember we've talked about that in earlier chapters and all of this was predicted by Gordon Moore and uh, what he stated about technology increasing every 18 months doubling in capacity became known as Moore's Law. Mobile computing is made possible by wireless technology and quite simply wireless technology means there's no wires. We're not uh, tied to wires like we used to be many many years ago. And mobile of course means that uh, the location can change. The changes and advances in wireless technology including cellular technologies have changed our lives and the way we do business. Specifically our concerns in this chapter are the uh, wireless technologies that have brought about mobile computing and mobile commerce. Mobile computing simply means you have real-time wireless connection to the internet or uh, other computing environments and uh, mobile commerce means that uh, people can do business. They can buy things, sell things, and do other transactions on their mobile device. You probably haven't thought of it this way, but uh, your smartphone can actually replace a lot of other devices, and that's known as dematerialization. And that occurs when uh, many physical devices can be replaced by one physical device. For instance, think about your phone. It functions as your camera, a radio, a television, um, a desktop computer in some cases. It could be a recording studio. It could be a GPS, a word processor, spreadsheet, a flashlight. You can uh, do board games and video games, all kinds of things. It replaces your encyclopedias, your dictionaries, your textbooks, alarm clocks, and many, many, many more things. Car keys can all be replaced by your smartphone. We talked briefly about mobile commerce, and mobile commerce is changing the way we do business as consumers and as businesses. And it's been made possible by two things. Number one, the wide, widespread availability of mobile devices. Uh, smartphones are, are readily available. They're, they're cheaper than they used to be. Um, there's more than six billion cell phones throughout the world, and cell phones are actually increasing more rapidly in developing world than they, uh, than they are in the Western developed world. And that's because of uh, infrastructure. Uh, you put up one cell tower and uh, you can reach millions of people, or at least thousands of people, instead of having to put up uh, you know, uh, telephone poles with wires everywhere. And along with declining prices, the other thing that has made uh, mobile commerce possible is improved bandwidth. Um, 3G, 4G, uh, especially in Wi-Fi, enables you to connect your mobile device to a very fast internet connection and be able to uh, surf and uh, download textbooks and uh, buy things from Amazon and other vendors very quickly. We've talked a little bit about purchasing um, things on your smartphone, but another specific application in mobile commerce are financial services. And you can do banking and micropayment, uh, money transfers, uh, M wallets, and uh, bill payment services are all available with, in some cases, just you know one simple click or uh, touch of your smartphone. Another term you should be familiar with is pervasive computing. And uh, one aspect of pervasive computing is RFID, or Radio Frequency Identification Tags. And these are tags that uh, manufacturers can place on items. They have antennas and computer chips in them, and they can use them for uh, inventory control. Um, there are two different types of RFID. One is an active, and that actually has to have uh, an internal battery. And then there's passive, and passive tags uh, rely entirely on the reader for the power. They're less expensive, and uh, they can be right up to about 20 feet. And you would find these very often in inventory tags. RFID is also used in uh, shoplifting security. When you go through a store like Walmart, there are antennas that read RFID tags, and if uh, they haven't been disabled, of course, you're going to have an alarm that will go off. Another aspect of pervasive computing is the Internet of Things. We've uh, discussed that briefly in an earlier chapter. But the Internet of Things is uh, where everything, animals, people, um, appliances can all be attached to the Internet. And some examples might be uh, you know, soda machines, a heart monitor in a specific individual, farm animal with a biochip transmitter, automobile tire pressure. The next assigned chapter discusses cloud computing. And cloud computing is a type of computing that delivers convenient, on-demand, pay-as-you-go access to a network of shared computing resources, which could be storage devices, servers, networks. And one of the biggest advantages of cloud computing is that customers only pay for what they need. They can change the requirements and use a lot of servers or just a few servers, depending on the demand. Well, there are two different types of cloud services. There's the public cloud and the private cloud. And a public cloud is shared and easily accessible by anybody. Um, anybody could rent access uh, on a public cloud.
A private cloud, sometimes called an internal cloud or a corporate cloud, is accessed just by one organization usually. Uh, they still have the flexibility to only use what you need. For instance, one business unit may need more resources one day than another. It would make sense, and yes, it's true, that uh, private clouds are more secure than public clouds, and that's one of the reasons that uh, corporations adopt them, is they are installed behind the corporate firewall. Some of the specific cloud computing services that uh, organizations and companies might be interested in purchasing would include infrastructure as a service, and that's when you would purchase uh, servers or networks and storage capacity. Then there's platform as a service, where that's when you rent an operating system or a database or even software development technologies. And then there's software as a service where you actually purchase or rent specific pre-developed software. And if any of you have used Google Docs or Microsoft Office 365, that's an example of software as a service.